and bring it down to 74. And then I'll copy that whole thing and paste it across to the 100 tests that we will make that would have an uneven coin. So now we're gonna paste all the way across. So there's our table generation. Let's insert a table, insert table. And so now we have our, our random generator for the unfair coin. So now let's select the whole thing and, and make a static test, copy in the whole thing and put our cursor over here and we'll put it right here and right click and I'm gonna paste one, two, three, just the values. I'm gonna select the headers and format the headers. So I'm gonna make them home tab, font group, black, white, centered, and wrapping the text. I'll select all of the data now, and let's make that our blue and bordered. So we'll select the entire data set, and we'll make that home tab, font, bordered, and blue. And then now, when I do my count, if it's heads, it's gonna say, I want you to say equals count if brackets. And then I'm gonna take the whole thing, I'm putting my cursor up one, control shift up, and then shift down. Now I'm gonna look up here to my formula bar, comma, if it's a one, count it. And so that comes out to 21. And then I, one way I can do the second bit, if it's tails, I'm just going to say, I know there's 75 of them, so I can, or 74, so I could just say this equals, you know, this count of 74 minus 21. That would be the easiest thing to do. We could also come up with a, with a formula to say count uh, if it's not equal to, you know, one, right? And that would give it, but, but the easiest thing to do would be that. And I'm going to say then the totals and sum them up which of course should come out to 74. And then we can take our percent, our percent heads versus the percent tails and then the percent total. So the percent head this time was equal to 21 divided by 74, making that a percent home tab numbers percentifying tails is 51 over 74 and we'll say home tap numbers percentify font group underline the total percent then of course summing 2872 is number group percent 100 percent so there we have it if i copy this across it's copied all the way across for our 100 tests so now we've got that copied I'll, I will make this uh, something funny happen here. Hold on. It's, oh, I, I can't. I have an, an issue. And that's because I used this 74. And that's not going to move. I, that needs to be absolute. So that's RI71. That's uh, RI75. So I'm going to put my cursor in here. F4 dollar sign before the letter, dollar sign before the number, and then copy that across. And it should be good to go. And then I'll select the whole bottom bit and make it that dark blue and white for our totals down here. And so we'll make that home tab font group dark blue and white. So now you can see, of course, if I looked at the percent heads, then you're gonna say, hey, look, that doesn't look right. Something looks, looks leaning towards, looks like it's leaning towards the tails, right? So if I, let's copy all of the heads and transpose our totals. So I'm just gonna say, if I just look at my heads, I would expect it to be around 50, 50. If I go up top and transpose it, first I'm gonna right click just the values. Then I'm gonna copy that and put my cursor in VH, right click, paste it, one, paste it, special, transpose, enter, uh, delete all of this stuff, 
because we don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to insert a table, insert table, OK, make it a percent, home tab, number, percentifying it. So there, so there we have our numbers. And then if I wanted to say this is what was expected, expected, and this is the difference, difference, Expected would be 0.5 or 50%. I'm going to double click, copying that down. The difference is 28 minus 50. And so notice the differences are all you know going one way. So now we have some evidence where we're saying, hey, look, something doesn't look right according to these tests. We have a preponderance of evidence to then reject the null assumption that it's a fair coin which if flipped an um, uh, infinite amount of times would come out to 50 50 right in the total population i'm going to delete this now if i make a histogram of this data i'm going kind of quick because we're running long on time i can go to the insert charts histogram so here's a histogram of the unfair coin leaning towards tails and you can see the center of the graph. It still looks like it's centered, but you can see where the, the labels are over here uh, instead of around 50%. So the center point is spreading out over here, which is, is not where we would expect the center to be. Whereas if I copy the, the even coin and I copy the histogram we came from that and we copy that over here, then let's paste that we can see that the center point is what we would is closer to, you know to what we would expect so so that's our uh uh this one's still kind of shifting over to the right here a bit that's kind of interesting but you get the point here so you get so 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 the idea is, is that we would test it the total population is uh, infinite number of flips here when we compare it to like sampling that we might do in an election. So an infinite number of flips, which would be 50-50, we took a sample, which is a finite number of flips. And here we've got a preponderance of evidence that certainly leads us to believe that something looks off. Here we're still a little bit shifted over to, to, to the right, uh, but we're nowhere, we're nowhere near as skewed as obviously this one up top. Uh, and again, obviously, because it's a random sample, we can then get into questions of how close are we to the actual number given the samples, which we'll talk more specifically about in future presentations.